A dictation given by beloved El Moria, July 5th, 1985, at a conference called Born Free to Love, gives a pitiful, a pivotal statement on the mission of Twin Flames today and teaches you how to join forces with your Twin Flame for freedom. I will read to you from it. First, I would tell you that the Ascended Masters always address the question of what is most necessary to the God realization of the Chila and to the meeting of the demands of the urgency of the hour, urgencies which engulf nations and leaders and families and solitary souls climbing the Mount, the Mount Olympus, the Mount Olympus or the Himalayas, Mount Shasta or the Point of Everest. Blessed ones, climb the mountain to the I Am Presence and understand that the need of thy soul complementing the urgency of world need is for a greater wholeness, a greater love, a greater light. Incompletion is the stamp that has been stamped upon many a file of many a chila whose records we keep in Darjeeling. Incompletion. Are your days incomplete? Is your path incomplete? Is there an incompleteness in your life for a want of balance? Are there things you need to know to really have sp spiritual wholeness as well as the wholeness of health? <laughs> Beloved, understand that this means that the divine plan cannot be completed because of personal karma or world conditions or the separation of twin flames. Understand that at one point in the career of your messengers, they're reuniting hung by a thread. Its possibility was present by a thread of contact and a thread which, if broken, could become buried deep neath the tides of the sea, as deep as the transatlantic <coughs> cable. Thus realize that not all have found one another. Some have passed as ships in the night, producing tension, frustration, sweating, bad dreams, psychological conditions, the sense that all is lost, and ultimately the obsession and more severe psychological problems, which in fact are not truly resolved in the presence of the beloved, but often exacerbated. That is, when twin flames meet at the wrong time, sometimes their different karma and their different levels on the path exacerbates the problem and they are not able to get along. Thus I come to pierce the illusion that all problems are resolved by the meeting of twin flames or even soulmates. But I come with a statement of truth that all problems may be solved by this union when it is founded upon the rock of divine reality. Sometimes the relationship of twin flames is as difficult as any marriage or any partnership in life. And unless each side of the divine whole is willing to surrender and put aside those things for the greater love that is most important, you can find that twin flames will divorce as easily as any other people. And most of this is based on the notions of romantic love that we've seen in the movies for decades in America, where we expect perfection and that the mate will fulfill all of our needs, our wants, our desires, and that marriage should be something that is simply beyond this world in bliss. And we expect our partner to be father and mother and all things to us, instead of entering the relationship with an expectancy of giving and giving and giving and sacrificing and seeing it as a path of initiation, whereby the rough spots come out in each one and we must be willing to work on ourselves and keep the flame for our mate and help that one overcome also. What I'm saying is the level of expectations in relationships in America and in the Western world are far beyond what is actually humanly possible of delivering. And this is where we come to the extreme disappointments and frustrations in all kinds of relationships. We come and we sponsor because your hearts have yearned, your souls have prayed, your minds have sought, sought to fulfill the reason for being in this life, sought to attain oneness with the perfect one. We will connect those for whom the connection results in a positive force for one another and for society. Where it would be detrimental in all ways or some, we, we recommend the accelerated path of the chila, humility before the teaching of the great white brotherhood, which does give to you the knowledge of the violet flame and the call to Astraea, which is the most powerful mantra to the divine mother that has been released in this octave. 
The power of the Universal Mother carrying the circle and sword of blue flame that is released in this mantra is great indeed, capable of fulfilling every manifestation of the Mother, East or West, and capable of driving from you evil spirits that lurk, addictions, self-indulgences, and all pettiness that snatch from you that precious love which comes so gently, so powerfully, and yet is as fragile as crystal, and can be broken and will be broken by the forces of the night, unless you keep the tryst with Astraea and Archangel Michael and Kartikeya, whom you know as Sanat Kumara. So we find that the unkind word and the sudden anger and the sudden expression of emotion through disappointment dashes the cup of divine love. And then we seek again and again and again that cup is dashed until we recognize that only harmony, profound inner harmony, can contain and sustain the divine love that we are seeking in our friendships. Understand that the highest and most perfect love begins with your individual expression of the heart the expansion of that flame of love until all irritation is consumed and pride is not and you stand before your God truly worthy of whatever blessing can be given. Inasmuch as personal karma is the key factor separating twin flames and inasmuch as it is desirable that twin flames unite in service, the X factor that can make the difference is the entering in of one of the ascended masters or of Padma Sambhava or Gautama or Sanat Kumara to sponsor that union by pledging to take on the karma that does keep apart those souls. This sponsorship is like the sponsorship of the individual chila, except it is the joint sponsorship of the twain. You can seek the sponsorship of an ascended master or the entire great white brotherhood of your twin flames and ask that the ascended masters assist you in bearing that karma so that you can come together in world service, in personal service, and not be separated by those extreme tests when karma comes up for transmutation between you. This then is a call you want to include in your prayers. It is a call that says, O oh God, I desire to perform the best service and to fulfill my inner vow with my twin flame. If it be that karma does separate us and therefore our service, I pray that the Lord God set it aside for an hour and a year, that we might show ourselves worthy, plow the straight furrow, enter into the service of our God and our country, and of world freedom, that together we may choose to balance that karma, and we do choose to do so, Lord God. We pledge then, no matter what may come, that if we be united, we will serve in harmony by the grace of God to first balance the karma taken on by an ascended master, that that one need not carry for us the burden that is truly our own. Thus having so said, it is important to record on paper in your own writing this prayer, and whatever you have added to it with the date carefully inscribed and with your signature, you may insert it in the book of the everlasting gospel. You must remind yourself to call to Archangel Michael to defend the highest encounter and to bind all impostors of your twin flame. For as soon as the desire is set and the sail is raised on your ship, the false hierarchy will send in those of attraction, of glamour, or of heavy karma, or even the initiators that come out of the depths of darkness, posing as the Krishna, the Holy One of God, that is thine own. So love is an initiation in itself. And when you desire perfect love and have perfect love and have contacted that perfect love of God in your relationships, you will find that the fallen angels who are jealous of your love will come to destroy it. And if you are vulnerable in any place, you can find the most beautiful manifestation of love gone because you have not taken heed to defend that love. This also includes the love of parents for children that requires extreme patience as well as discipline, and whom the Lord loves, he chastens. To prepare for the perfect union, one must have the vision and the inner tie to God that tells one of the lurking danger. Thus keep the prayer and the call, and when all tests have been passed and the one sent is sent, remember that the purpose of that togetherness is truly first and foremost, the balancing, the balancing of karma and the setting free of the ascended master that indeed has sponsored you and paid a price, the understanding of which will not be yours until one day you stand to offer yourself to pay the price for another. 
Now it does often occur that this very call results in the ascended twin flame approaching the unascended one, and thereby the union of hearts as above so below can be fulfilled as the ascended twin flame does hold the balance of the karma while the unascended twin flame accelerates on the path. This union may become so great that the ascended master and the unascended chila may walk the earth as one at inner levels and the electronic presence of the ascended twin flame may be upon the unascended one. Thus that unascended one having an aura of completeness presents therefore to others a strength, a love, an ability to give because the source is wholeness, is oneness. Many of those souls who are on the path as seekers, many of you here this evening have an ascended master for your twin flame. And this is why you are seeking God, because you desire to know how to get closer to that one in the octaves of light. This is a common occurrence because many, many of the ascended masters are the other half of the divine whole who have gone on while those who are in embodiment have decided to tarry a little longer in the enjoyment of life in the human consciousness. And so that twin flame has even had to make the decision to walk away from you in order to take the ascension, gain that God mastery, and even help you more. I have heard of cases where those in embodiment have resented that their twin flame did ascend and leave them. And of course it is folly, because in truth there is no better position to be in than to have your twin flame ascended, because your twin flame will spend all of his time in heaven helping you on earth pass your tests and that twin flame will lend to you the momentum of his causal body and be with you always. When you can enter into conscious cooperation with your I am presence and your twin flame, you can quickly accelerate and know that the goal can be one of achieving your ascension in this life. This path must be prayed for. Some of you are not able to unite in a very personal way with the Ascended Master who is your twin flame because of intervening personal relationships that have become, if I might tell you, all too personal. And as a result, even the most intimate communion in the secret chamber of the heart with your Christ Self is too often interrupted by the sympathetic heart that is more attuned to the sympathies of other human beings than to the Christ of those human beings. The auric profile of the sympathetic heart the heart of self-pity has been drawn in pastels to the messenger by Saint Germain. You can see its downward pull and the muddy aura that it produces. Sympathy allows your light to be pulled from your chakras and pulled from your auras. And it is amazing to see those who lose their light in this manner because they have no sense that they have lost the light and yet the aura has decreased, the light of the eye and the chakras has decreased. The antithesis of this type of misqualification of the heart is expressed in the one who is all too impersonal and therefore does not have a momentum for the release of the fires of the heart in love to brother or sister or pilgrims on the path of life. Thus, whereas the non-exercise of the heart results in hardness of heart, its misuse makes it become emotional and bow down with that vibration of pity. Pity, I tell you, that is not able to raise up oneself or the friend. We have called this conference then and we have called it for the very purpose that you should understand that the necessity of the divine wholeness is the mandate of the hour to solve the international crisis of war, of the last plagues, of the fourth horseman of the apocalypse who rides as the death rider in this hour. Whatever you see in the world can be healed by the science of the spoken word through the soul's union with the I am presence, with the ascended masters and with the twin flame first at the level of the Christ Self, and then in all levels of being. Each decree and each mantra, therefore, being offered in the defense of this community, dedicated by Maitreya to the reinitiation of twin flames who left the Garden of Eden and did not take the advancing steps on the path. Maitreya has come. He has set up the mystery school, choosing the Royal Teton Ranch as the place for that light. He has come to call ancient souls, twin flames, back to the initiations where they left off on the continent of Lemuria. Here was the mystery school. Here was the opportunity. Here it is, born again. It is the most miraculous manifestation of divine love when Maitreya or Sanat Kumara come to initiate souls 
who are initiates on the path, who are disciples, jilas of the ascended masters, and the quickening of hearts to a mutual recognition. We have seen time and time again that people who may work side by side or know one another may spend years of service balancing karma and suddenly one day God chooses to quicken their hearts and to open their eyes and they see that that one who has been a friend, a brother or sister on the path is truly their twin flame, their soulmate. And these marriages are made in heaven and they occur in the mystery school in our community in Montana because the individuals have fulfilled a certain course of chilaship. And I can tell you when this happens and when the gift of that union is given, they have come so far in their self-mastery and their inner harmony and their inner resolution and their desire to serve that truly there are not those blocks and rough edges that have to be worked through. Obviously there are always some because we are still karma, but there is such a centeredness that that love is released from their causal bodies. And these marriages are an amazing experience of bliss, not only on earth, but in spiritual octaves, as hand in hand they walk that path. When I held a seminar in Miami, it was March 12th, 1978, during Twin Flames in Love in Miami Beach, Florida. That was a seminar on Twin Flames and there were seated in the front row a man and a woman who had never met before who happened to sit down next to each other they attended this twin flame seminar they both decided to attend summit university and study the master's teachings and by and by they recognized one another as twin flames and they have been married and many years now and have a number of children and at this time are serving at the inner retreat so it is a wonderful thing to see how God works to bring us together. There was a certain moment in our lives, the life of Mark Prophet and myself. It came in 1961, the opportunity for us to meet, become acquainted, and to dedicate our lives to this service. Had I not taken the option to follow him and leave everything, and leaving the world that I knew, to go and be trained as a messenger, that thread of contact with the twin flame would not have been strengthened and would not have come again perhaps for thousands of years. It was the opportunity in this age to fulfill our divine plan and to bring these teachings to the world. I am profoundly grateful for the strength that God gave me and from the heart of Archangel Michael to give me that determination to recognize the call of El Moria to be trained as a messenger and the call of the twin flame, and the call of the twin flame as guru, as Mark Prophet was, my first guru, and through him, El Moria. Leaving everything we have in the world and human attachments, our surroundings, our friends, our job, our family, walking out of this to follow that call is an amazing step. It is like boarding a spacecraft and leaving the earth. One leaves everything one has ever known to follow this call of the heart and not wholly certain what will be the outcome. So I can tell you that when love calls, as Khalil Gibran tells us, we must follow that love. Now I'm going to give to you this dispensation for Twin Flames, which Lady Master Venus gave at that conference. She announced, I am come with a dispensation of love and light whereby love might increase upon earth. And as I have stood before the Lords of Karma and the Cosmic Council, and as I have heard the deliberations concerning a greater release of love, they have said, we would long ago have increased the light of love upon earth, but always when there is even the increase of the presence of love in the presence of the avatars, there is that intense misqualification among mankind as the love comes upon the aura and by their own momentum of hatred, that love is turned to darkness. And therefore the lords of karma have withheld love until there might be found among mankind the very first fruits of love. Those who would come forth to understand the great disciplines required to hold that flame within the heart and to keep it steady hour by hour. And therefore the dispensation is an opportunity for all souls of light who hear or read this dictation 
to know that unto you is given the opportunity before the lords of karma to prove your use of love in the highest order and light of service for a period of 12 months. During this 12 month cycle you will know the initiations of love under the 12 hierarchies of the sun according to the unfoldment of the cosmic clock. Now this will be for the purpose of unfolding within you the understanding of the movement of the energy of love. The sealing of love in the chakras, the turning and the acceleration of the chakras by purity and by love, by decrees to the white flame and the pink flame wrapped, wrapped then and bathed in the violet and blue light of Alpha and Omega. Then at the conclusion of that 12 month cycle just before the resurrection flame comes again a year from now in 1979, those who will have passed the initiation of love and seal the love and light and who have been a focus for the transmutation of world hatred and fear and doubt and discord and in harmony will find that the seven holy kumaras will come to accelerate and to seal within your seven chakras a most extraordinary manifestation of love that comes to you by the love of the evolutions of Venus, a victory of the ancient of days. And in that love you will know a fuller manifestation and in filling and in firing of your being with the light of the Holy Spirit. Beloved ones, your brothers and sisters of light, your ascended twin flames, those who are on the etheric planes and those serving upon earth, are one in this hour in our flame. For we have provided the flame of Sanat Kumara and Lady Venus as a chalice, a giant chalice unto earth's evolutions to hold the souls of twin flames, in order that twin flames might come into the union of the divine embrace for a moment now, during the release of this dictation. And some of you have not been together, separated by astral momentums for even hundreds and sometimes thousands of years. We are calling then to the souls to come into this chalice of light as the guardian angel and the great cherubim now escort your soul as it transcends the body temple and enters into this joy of the eternal reunion. This oneness of the flame is yours to share with a cosmos. And as you have heard the aria of the singing of twin flames, you have heard the longing, the compelling love, the action of that light as the singing one unto the other causes the caduceus action in the seven chakras and the rising of the energy. And thus the building spiral by spiral of light is indeed the goal of life for twin flames. Now in a moment of silence in the white fire core of our being, seal then the love fires and embrace the one that you have always loved. Please meditate now in silence and do this. The sealing of that love is by the Father and Mother, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed ones, forevermore keep the flame of love on Terra in the remembrance of the fond embrace and in the understanding that you are never alone but at inner levels your hearts beat as one in three-quarter time. Two hearts beating as one in the heart of God form the nucleus for the light that is the victory of the age. O oh, beloved ones, let the petals of the rose as the velvet caress your souls and wrap you now in that grace, in that mercy, and above all in the kiss of promise, whereby you know that you will meet again in the hour of the victory and in the hour of the ascension, but that from this moment on there is established once again the indissoluble link, the thread. And so, beloved ones, remember that for every service that you perform, there is the arcing and the pulsation of light unto the beloved. And for every disservice or misuse of energy, you have burdened not only yourself, but the one that you love and hold so dear. 
Now let us draw forth by the command of love, the light of the heart. The following is a mantra for twin flames given by Lady Master Venus, and you can find it in this book too, on Twin Flames, page 418. In the name of the living Christ, I command the flame of the I am that I am to send forth the light, the quickening, the energy. O lords of love, lords of creation, lords of mind and lords of form, lords of individuality, we consecrate life and all light bearers who are a part of the evolution of twin flames. Let this release of energy be, then be as a giant cable, an acceleration of love whereby instinctively, intuitively, by the wisdom of the heart, reinforced now by Helios and Vesta, who stand in the sun to radiate their love and light. This dispensation will be the empowering of twin flames to stand in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to command all life free. Let us sing in our mantra booklet to Helios and Vesta as we accept their twin flames who are in the etheric octave congruent with the sun of this system. This is on page four, number 16. Beloved Helios and Vesta, reinforce in this hour the dispensation of Lady Master Venus and Sanat Kumara for the reunion of our twin flames at inner levels and if it be the will of God in physical manifestation. We call for sponsoring masters to sponsor us in this union. If necessary, to take some burden of karma from us that will allow us to serve together as we pledge our vow to join in service to balance that karma that the sponsoring master shall have taken on for us. We make the call and we ask that we have the courage to walk that path whereby we are realigned with the will of God, no matter what the price or the pain. O oh God, thy will is holy. Holy is thy will. Holiness unto the Lord. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, thou alone art holy in manifestation in man and in woman.
continuing this dictation from Lady Master Venus, she says, Understand then that you may stand together in this very moment as we stand, and as Helios and Vesta stand in the center of the solar system. And you may, in the name of the Christ, in the name of the Buddha, in the name of the I am that I am, give this command. In the name of Almighty God and in the name of the Christ, I challenge the fallen ones, the imposters of our twin flames. I challenge them in the darkness of the night. I challenge them in the noonday sun of Helios and Vesta. And I call to the seven archangels for the binding and the judgment of these fallen ones on earth and in heaven, as it is decreed by Almighty God, according to his will, wisdom, and love. I call forth the judgment and I demand then that accountability be set before those individuals who have attempted to usurp the throne of kings and priests unto God, of twin flames united in love. I seal this call this day in the light of the holy Kumaras and I decree it for the fulfillment of cycles and the Piscean age. This call is given to us with its preamble, which I read previously, so that we may take a stand to defend the circle of love, the circle of Alpha and Omega, the Tao where we are. As we defend love, we send forth the strength of love and its protection, and others upon earth who do not have that strength or that knowledge will also be protected. The foundation of the Aquarian society is the Holy Family. If we cannot be harmonious with one another, how can we bring forth the new souls of the seventh root race in the Aquarian age? This is very fundamental, and we must make peace with ourselves, our parents, our ancestors, in order to accomplish this. These teachings on twin flames can be part pursued by you in this volume. As we have come together for a twofold purpose this evening, so I would take up the second part of that purpose, which is to meditate upon the great divine director and his concept, his vision of the age of Aquarius. I would like to take a few quotes from past dictations where statements have been made on this subject as a background to the great divine director's dictation. At the Easter conference 1988, Jesus said, Therefore be bright and whitened and encouraged in this hour. For beloved, the way must be taken and there is no other way. For through my sacred heart and the initiative path which I give to my disciples, and truly for you that is sealed in the heart of my disciple, Martha, you will then demonstrate to the world that the path of initiation can be realized, can be attained, and you will introduce the age of Aquarius with the victory of Christ in you. From the Maha Chohan, June of 88. I have come then to deliver to this city of Los Angeles the mandate of the Holy Spirit. Blessed hearts, you have read the scripture concerning the sins against the Holy Spirit, which cannot be forgiven unless forsaken. Mankind have violated the compelling laws of the Father, the compelling law of the Son. Intercession then has come. Blessed hearts, the age of Aquarius does set a new standard. And therefore, as the tides of the sea and the planetary levels of water threaten to rise, so there is the raising of the standard whereby the sons of God are expected to embody a greater love, whose intensity, whose very sacred fire in your hearts, does bind the force of anti-love. Let the sign God gave you in the beginning of the I Am Presence be your sign in the ending, to enter a straight and narrow path in the ascent to the holy of holies of your being. Putting all lesser things aside then, know that the Aquarian age can be in your heart and be in you in this hour, if you but receive its hierarch, Saint Germain, its violet flame, and the seventh ray path of initiation. 
Speaking in February 1988, the great divine director said, the world can receive the violet flame as the gift of your hearts. Know you, beloved, what 600 souls of light such as those who have gathered here this evening, this was Phoenix, Arizona, can do, not alone for this state and nation, but for a planet. I tell you, we're 600 to gather, even weekly for four hours of violet flame. What changes you would see would astonish you. For there is a geometrization of that God flame, and the number who gather is squared and then multiplied by the power of 10,000 times 10,000. So we desire to see the thousands gather in the cities of America, and this is the need of the hour. To that end, then, may you understand of just what great worth is your heart and soul and your chalice in the earth in this hour. Would to God that the people who so love the light would capture this spark of liberty, this sign of the Godhead of creativity descending in the dawning hours of the age of Aquarius. Would to God that the people en masse would rise up to overthrow not only their karma, but also their oppressors who keep them bound to a round of darkness in church and state worldwide. Beloved, the world is upon the verge of the ushering in of such an age of enlightenment, the gentle turning of each individual toward his God, toward his I am presence, with that meditation and utter love. I tell you, in the twinkling of the all-seeing eye of God, you would see what change upon planet Earth. Thus engage not in wishful thinking, but in dynamic decrees, and see what you can do and draw forth from your causal body. This is from a dictation by beloved Portia. Therefore, because you are Chilas of Saint Germain, I come as his Shakti in this hour. I come to you, beloved, with a fierceness of the sacred fire that is the white fire core of the living flame of Aquarius. I come with an intensity, blessed ones. And remember this, that in the day and the hour of the vengeance of our God, as you have been reminded of this a number of times, that intensity of the divine word as the rock does descend, whether by free will you have called for it or not. Therefore, you may turn yourself from the mother manifestation of the feminine ray for some period of time. You may deny the intensity of that white fire of the mother, but the hour and the day do come, beloved, when the divine mother and the presence shall come upon the whole world as the action for the purging of a planet in order for the age of Aquarius to be firmly locked in the physical atoms. This age will come, beloved, whether there is a living man, woman, child, beast, or plant upon this planet, for there is a necessity for cosmic cycles to be fulfilled. Speaking in November 1966, through Mark Prophet, the great divine director said, It is not the will of God or the ascended masters to permit the downfall of society or of the world of form. But we want you to know that the accumulation and accretion of darkness has risen higher than ever before in history. In fact, it was only 75% this high when the decision was made to overthrow in the time of Noah the civilizations of Atlantis then existing. Conditions in the world today have reached a point where the karmic board has withdrawn all restraint, all restraint from the beings of the elements. For a certain period of time, a dispensation has been granted at the request, the righteous request of both the Darjeeling and Indian councils of the Great White Brotherhood for the will of God to be made known. And the will of God has clearly delineated that if the present course is to be pursued, the entire planet would of necessity be blotted out of the planetary chain, and those righteous individuals who are here be removed to other evolutions. Inasmuch as there remains one shred of hope for mankind, that when the forces of elemental life are unleashed and when certain destructive elements in mankind are released and unleashed without restraint, that mankind may then awake and decide for themselves that they will cancel out the product of their own corrupted imaginations. We have recommended that this shall occur for the sake of mankind and for the preservation of their immortal soul and the preservation of immortal value. Therefore, we sound forth tonight the edict that unless mankind shall change and correct and mend some of the terrible flaws now existent in society, certainly the elementals, the forces of nature, will be unable to hold back the tide of human creation and the return of planetary karma. With these words, I would like to invite us to once again take up 
the violet flame tape that we gave in the beginning for the purpose of giving you an intermission so that you can leave and be back in 15 minutes to be comfortable and to be seated as we give our Bija mantras as the foundation for the dictation of the great divine director this evening. You are excused.
number 34, page 9. Let us sing to the great divine director. Beloved, mighty I am presence from the heart of God in the great central sun. I call forth the victory of the God flame on behalf of all souls here and all souls of light worldwide, everywhere upon earth in all octaves. I call for the initiation of their twin flames together in service to balance their karma and ascend back to the heart of the great central sun. I call forth now the victory of the light and I call for that divine plan to descend from the causal body of the great divine director, beloved El Moria. Let that great sphere of light press in now through the I am presence, holy Christ self, and the heart chakra of each one. I call to you souls of light. I call to you and I affirm your God obedience to that divine plan. I call for the compelling fires of the Divine Mother that you might accept that divine plan when it is placed before you. I call for the meeting of heaven and earth in the will of God. Let the cosmic cross of white fire watch between you and your twin flame until you are God victorious in the light. Will you offer now your personal prayers to God? and your call for assistance to the great divine director for the oneness of twin flames and your divine plan fulfilled in this age together.
us give the Bija mantras. The first set is on page 14, and the second set is on page 17. The mantras on page 17 are given from G to A, going from the first to the second to the third column. You can visualize these mantras releasing the light through the chakras that are depicted. That's the base of the spine, four petals, to the crown, the thousand petal lotus. You will see the mantra and the feminine deities on the screen, if you care to give them from the screen. Please visualize the light rising on the spinal altar as a fountain of light coming from the base chakra to the crown. Let us begin. Om Aim Sarasvatye Namaha Darling. 
In the hour of the twelve o'clock line, I appear. And I enter through the pathway of the third eye. As you see me, as you behold me in my form, with a blue belt and the light of yellow diamond, know then, beloved, that I enter your world at your bidding and in answer to your call. I come in the name of Gautama Buddha and the lords of karma. I come for my sons, Saint Germain and El Moria. I bow before the light within you, though that light be a glimmer. For I know that if you receive the universal Christ, and accept the breath of the Holy Spirit breathed upon you now, so the flame of the heart shall be fanned. Keep that flame blazing in the earth, for it is the sustainment of worlds ye know not of. Planet Earth truly hangs in the balance, beloved. And the thread holds not a contact with light, for mankind have once again abdicated that light of the heart. The thread holds Damocles' sword. Thus the one who sat at the banquet with the king, who had placed above him that sword hanging by the thread, did not eat with equanimity that night. And yet, though the world have hanging above its head the sword of its own karma that could descend at any time, they indeed eat and sleep and make, mar and make merry and are given in marriage with what they perceive to be peace but it is the unawakened state. Thus they cry, peace, peace, and there is no peace that is real. Keep the flame then, for your flame and your heart attuned with your I am presence, whose fire you yourself fan daily in the name of the Maha Chohan, the representative of the Holy Spirit, that flame does count for hundreds and thousands and millions, depending on the size of that flame. Some go within to truly meditate upon the Divine Mother and make contact while giving these mantras. Others merely look around the room while they are mouthing the words. We cannot attain for you the magnitude of the secret rays, five of the Dhyani Buddhas. We can give you the lute, but you must play it. We give you the tapes, but you must endow them with the living presence of your God flame. You must enter in and your experience each and every time you give these mantras ought to be the physical sensation of the light rising. You ought to feel it at the medulla, at the base of the brain. You ought to feel that light and hold it there and know that it is given to you, that you yourselves might anchor the light in the third eye chakra and thereby see for yourselves what is the divine plan for the age of Aquarius. In this hour I come to tell you, beloved, the story of the ages. 
Aquarius is an age and a cycle that exists somewhere for the cycles of all galaxies and planetary homes are not the same. The Aquarian age is a state of consciousness. Those who have internalized the cosmic freedom and the cosmic Christ consciousness of the seventh ray are in the age of Aquarius. As it is written, though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Though I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, behold, thou art there. Where the physical body is, it matters not. Where the soul is in the consciousness of absorption of the violet light and ray and fire, where there is the balancing of karma, so I tell you that one does exist in the higher bodies, in etheric octaves of light which span the galaxies, in golden age cities of light, where all of the elements of Aquarius, as science, God government, cosmic music, a path of education and acceleration for those life streams, all that you can imagine of a golden age are in full progress. Thus the question is whether that etheric level, that etheric plane of cities of light shall become physical. Where there is no vessel waiting, where there is no offering of self to be the chalice, the very container of this age, how then can it be lowered into manifestation? There are some places upon earth, whether in the Himalayas or at our western Shambhala at the inner retreat, where elements of that seventh ray and age are indeed in manifestation. And it is as the individual life stream is. Therefore, beloved, I invite you to journey with me and with Omri Tas the ruler of the violet planet, this night. As you place your body to rest upon your bed, make the call to the Archangel Michael, to my legions, to carry your soul in your etheric vessel and garment, to our heart, to our retreat. For we would show you the age of Aquarius in progress on the violet planet, and as it has been described to you, the violet flame directed from all of the chakras of the people into every area of life does eliminate, does eliminate drudgery, does eliminate woe and want and pain and sickness. Here the evolutions move swiftly in service, move swiftly in invocation. They are become the violet flame they are self-emptied and filled. Even the hue of their very skin has the aura and the light of the pink violet. Blessed ones, the people are fair-haired, and there is the violet eye as well as the blue. These souls, beloved, have transcended all levels of race or race consciousness. Their bodies reflect not race, but the light that they have embodied. The priesthood of the seventh ray of Melchizedek does serve here, and there are many, many altars throughout the planetary home where angels and devotees keep this flame. There are schoolrooms and universities of higher learning where the students study the course of history of many life waves and the places where they have been on earth and other planetary homes. They are in the mode of service and they know and realize what they have as a momentum of the violet flame. Therefore, there are screens in their university halls 
where several thousand may gather in universities throughout this planet and they are focused on areas of the cosmos in planetary spheres where the evolutions have not reached the level that they have reached. And they may look upon these screens and see events taking place simultaneously and then watch and see the Akashic records that show to them what are the karmic conditions and the long history of the interchange of the yin and yang and its perversion and therefore the dilemma of those life waves and their absence of God mastery. Thus having so studied the long course of the history of a world in a certain area and the key players that return again and again to reincarnate on the stage of life, they then draw up their lists in orderly fashion and where the great law will allow according to the will of God, they will direct their momentum of violet flame from their causal body, from their outer manifestation and literal violet flame reservoirs where this liquid violet flame is stored that it might be used where there is an emergency need even on the violet planet but principally on other planets and systems of worlds. Therefore, beloved, you might know that in this hour, the evolutions of this planet are very intent in observing the upsurge of freedom in China. And they are concerned lest once again, as has already been declared, martial law, the cutting off of communications with the outside world, the suppression, and finally, the putting out of this flame. Therefore, they appeal to you to take the violet flame cassettes that have been made and to give a full cassette daily for that violet flame to am be amplified in the hearts who demonstrate for freedom. For though they demonstrate for freedom, they do need an alignment, an alignment with the seventh ray and with the first, that they might enter into the will of God and seek that freedom, not alone for economic or socialistic purposes, not alone for, not alone for political reasons, beloved, but that they might sacrifice unto the Lord God. As Moses declared and as God spake through him, let my people go, that they might sacrifice unto me. Thus was the cry of God through Moses, and therefore to escape the bondage of Egypt, and yet to retain its flesh pots, to go out into the desert and to dance to the golden calf, and to be immersed in a materialistic civilization. This is not the true way of freedom and will not lead to freedom but bondage once again. And therefore revolutions for freedom do fail when they do not have at their root the spiritual reasons, the desire first and foremost of the First Amendment itself, the right of religious freedom. For this cause did pilgrims come to America. America is founded upon the desire of those who came to worship their God as they saw fit and as the Spirit would give them utterance. So, beloved, the very foundations of America endure to the present where religious freedom and the pursuit of religion is cherished. Let it long endure and let bigotry and fanaticism and the control of the fallen ones in church as well as state be banished and let it be banished also by your calls. Thus, beloved, for the victory of the light to succeed in China, there must be a turning of her people to the blessed Quan Yin, Guan Shirin, who is indeed their sponsor who is indeed the one who holds the mother flame. And it is principally the mother flame that is missing. And therefore, beloved, let us call for them to be cut free, to know and desire God and truly that divine mother. Blessed hearts, some evolutions 
must go through much pain and suffering to arrive at the single desire to be free, to know their God, and to sacrifice and surrender unto that God and that God alone. Therefore, not for the mere relaxation of world communism and socialism is there a sufficiency of light to win truly a revolution. Merely to have greater benefits economic of the relaxation, such as glasnost appears to be but is not. This is not sufficient reason to demonstrate, beloved, and therefore our evolutions are concerned, lest in desiring not the full cup of the path of initiation, but only to pursue the intellectual and materialistic path, these students shall come short of fulfilling that high mark that shooting of the arrow of the desire for freedom into the very heart of the causal body and into the very presence of God. Thus anchoring one's desire in the highest, one is received and raised up by the highest. And beloved ones, when it is spiritual freedom that is sought, all these things are added unto such an evolution. Thus abundance and freedom and the free enterprise system have come to America because of the founding stone, the foundation stone that was laid to give all to have that one element, religious freedom. Thus, beloved, because they have known the want of material things, this becomes the desire of those who have come under socialist and communistic dictatorships not only upon earth and other planetary homes. Wherever these dictatorships have come, beloved, and have covered those planetary homes, the light has been withdrawn, and there has been nothing left but a shell. Thus you see this on various planets in your own solar system. They have had the option of entering in to an Aquarian Age consciousness, but instead the people became lax, they refused to defend their freedom or see the handwriting upon the wall. They took for granted what had been hard won and given to them by the intercession of the ascended hosts. Thus, when the ultimate challenge was upon them, they were asleep, surfeited in the benefits of freedom, and they departed from the appreciation of the spiritual path into the mundane and the materialistic. This is true in many solar systems across the galaxies where there are dead and dying worlds where no longer human life is. For the use of free will having gone out, there is no longer the foundation or the, or the living presence for a path of discipleship or initiation. As I look upon the sun, Gautama, and recall his response to the question, who are you, and his answer, I am awake. So I would say, beloved, truly his answer was, I am free. Who was ever more free in that age or hour than the one? Sakya Muni, O oh, beloved, this one, this Tathagata, this Lord Gautama, did declare his independence from heredity, from the throne, from the crown, from wealth, from riches. Did declare his independence from the religions of the time, from asceticism. Did reject all and pursue the individual path of enlightenment through his own I am presence. Thus freedom once again in the heart of this son was born upon earth, and it is through the flame of freedom of the age of Aquarius that he did banish ignorance and did win the place of sitting in the seat of Sanat Kumara in this century. For the Lord of the world of this planet is a cosmic master of the seventh ray and age and violet flame, and therefore it is fitting that he should embody that mantle and office of Lord of the world as this earth is passing or not passing initiations to enter that age. Blessed hearts, you know not what you have 
in the person of Lord Gautama. For this master alone stands between mankind and the debacle of her oncoming karma. I submit to you in this hour of Wisak that you pledge your hearts to the Lord of the world to amplify and blend your causal bodies of violet flame with his own. That Saint Germain might have in you, multiplying your forces with Gautama, a champion, and there might grow a sphere of light, a violet flame between the causal body of Gautama and your own attainment here below that should begin as a cloud the size of the hand of a man and should grow and grow and grow that the earth might be contained within this fiery cloud of violet flame. Will you not take the ritual of the cloud given to you by Saint Germain in your intermediate studies in alchemy and take the tape of this and offer the ritual of the cloud and call forth the cloud of violet flame from the causal bodies of every member of the great white brotherhood in heaven and on earth. This, beloved, this will give cause and pause to the lords of karma and the four and twenty elders and cause there to be a mitigation of those prophecies that have been released through our messenger. And where there is not a full turning back of karma predicted, there may be a mitigation. And if not for mankind, surely I say, surely for those light bearers who have read the signs of the times, who have seen what the future portends and have kept the flame. The Lord does reward every man and woman and child according to his word and his work, to his honor, to his service, and to his love toward every part of life. Blessed hearts, no matter what does happen to mankind or this planet, you, by your alignment with God and your offering of these decrees to save a world, will have stored in your causal body and in your chakras such a mighty momentum of violet flame that your victory in the light shall be assured. Thus, wherever we are in cosmos, we live to serve the light and the evolutions of which we are a part. And we live to offer that invocation and mantra to increase the rings of our causal body and our chakras, even as the, tree, even as the trees in the forest add the ring each year. So, beloved, this twofold reason for being does always result that that which you send forth in toto does return to you multiplied ten thousand times ten thousand. As you sow light, you shall reap light. As you are light, you shall find yourself in the light of a golden age somewhere beyond time and space. Let us hope that by your effort, that which is above, which is called the kingdom of heaven, which is indeed the golden age of Aquarius in etheric octaves, may be on earth as it is in heaven. This will only come if those on earth embody it. And so you see, all predictions and prophecies of a golden age come down and rest upon the free will of those who see and know and understand. If you choose to embody that age and you make those sacrifices whereby many are converted through the Holy Spirit by your example, you may see that age manifest of a glory and an opportunity, of a science beyond all imagination, of the alchemy and of the development of the mind potential and the heart potential such as not been seen in this world since prior golden ages that are beyond history's memory in this hour. Yet they did exist, beloved, and once earth was in this pristine state, 
and her life waves had not descended to such levels of density where you are today. Thus they were in a semi-physical level that was almost entirely in the etheric octave and yet very concrete. Thus the earth herself was endued with light. But alas, it has been many thousands of years and the pollution of Maya, of effluvia, of karma is even far greater than the chemical pollution of the earth in this hour, which I tell you is an abomination of desolation standing in the holy place of Mother Nature where it ought not. Oh, the altar of nature, of the fire, the air, the water, and the earth, and the nature spirits. This desecration, beloved, equals or exceeds man's inhumanity to man. Is it any wonder, beloved, that the lords of karma are concerned for the continuity of life as it is known on earth today? For such a travesty do mankind commit daily against their God, against one another, and against the angels and elementals who serve them tirelessly. Beloved hearts, there is no question that the light bearers of this earth of this century who have made it their mission in life to keep the violet flame blazing, to offer decrees sometimes hours a day, have held open the door to Aquarius and the Aquarian Golden Age for the entire planetary home. Many of these life streams have passed on and are not in embodiment. Therefore, we look to you and to the new generation of light bearers who will receive the torch from the goddess of liberty and run as runners in a marathon. For it is a race, beloved. It is a race against time and the accelerating cycles and spirals. Therefore, beloved, I offer to you in this hour the love of my heart to sponsor the oneness of yourself with your twin flame. May you receive that oneness on condition that you give one of our violet flame tapes in its full length daily. Blessed ones, this is 90 minutes. It is without a doubt a sacrifice. I would suggest that your first mark of sacrifice be the elimination of the watching of 90 minutes of television or engaging in other pointless entertainment and diversions including human chatter and endless commentary that is empty and has not to do with a crisis at hand and should be no part of light bearers who are aware of that Damocles sword. Thus, beloved, you must understand that to sponsor you and your twin flame in many cases is a sacrifice on my part, for I then do not have that momentum of my causal body to give to other causes. Yet so important to the victory of planet Earth is the reunion of twin flames that I gladly make that sacrifice for which you may gladly compensate with this 90-minute tape. As you master the first and accelerate beyond the necessity of decreeing at its speed, you may go to the second and the third and the fourth. Do not be impatient, beloved ones, for the acceleration of the speed has taken for some years of practice. Therefore, decree at your own pace and know that the benefit ultimately is to yourself or you will be transmuting the karma between or that stands between twin flames and also assisting me in balancing that karma which I take on from you. Therefore we become one and there does result from this mutual service a bond, a love, a trust and you will know me more and more each day as you give these tapes in my flame and in my presence. You will come to recognize me and my vibration. You will know when I enter your room or your chapels and sanctuaries. Therefore, the tie that binds you to my heart, beloved, 
will also be the tie that gives to Saint Germain more of our love and light who has so laid his life on the altar of America and the world for the victory of Earth's evolutions. Blessed ones, my angels come before you now. If you will receive them, they do touch you with the ruby focus. Thus the crystal of the ruby ray, the flame of the ruby ray, does contact your heart. It is very intense and powerful and therefore the touch is quick and then released as a drop of the ruby ray does begin the alchemy of accelerating the physical heart in health and wholeness and the heart chakra. May the twelve petals thereof become as shining stars and gold and pink diamonds. May the heart become strong and sure. May the heart become strong and sure, beloved. May it become even the rock of Christ. May it become a source and a fountain for life. May you always have love for those who need it. And may you take note when you do not have the strength or the desire to love, that you retreat for an hour and see that your physical body is properly nourished in balance, that you have the necessary rest and that you recognize when you are not able to give, it is time to retreat even to the very bow of the ship. It is time to go beneath and be recharged even though the storm rage about you. For when you emerge, having achieved that cosmic attunement and oneness with the universal Christ, you will be able to say as Jesus said, before the frightened disciples. Peace, be still. Peace, be still and know that the I am that I am within me and within you is able to still and calm the storm. All who would give do need the recharge in the white fire core of being. Neglect this not, beloved, for to spend and be spent, as the Apostle Paul said, you must be in field again. To give of your best to the Master in the hearts of his own upon earth, take care of yourself. Take care, beloved, be prepared, and be prepared to survive all that may transpire upon earth. For when you emerge on the other side of the oncoming cycles of darkness, you will find a new opportunity and a new day. It is to that new day that we look, beloved, as the last hope and opportunity to bring in the great golden age. Thus you see, if you do not heed the warning and prepare, how will you find yourself in physical embodiment when we need you most? Surely we need you now, beloved, but we also need you alive and well on planet Earth in the year 2001, 2002. For new beginnings, beloved, new beginnings. Thus from this hope and this faith and in this charity, we seal you in the ruby ray of God's holy love. May you become the mystical body of the Christ and the Buddha on earth, even as the saints robed in white are that body in heaven. Call then to me and I will answer. Simple, therefore, is the response to your question. How may I contact my twin flame, how may I know my divine plan? Simple is the answer. Call to me and I will intercede for you, for this is the dispensation of the Lords of Karma and the four and twenty elders in this hour. It is important to act upon dispensations when they are given. 
For they are given, beloved, for only a certain time, and times and a half a time. And then, for various reasons of cosmic law, they may be withdrawn. I give to you then the open door of my heart, and I come to you, beloved, in love. O world, we behold thee in light and in the golden age of Aquarius. May you respond to the mother flame whereby and where with we enfold you. In the living heart of the Oten, In the living heart of the Om, let us together seal this service and this release. It is wonderful to have had this dictation between the hour of midnight and one because it is the hour twice a day when all cycles begin. The cycles of Alpha at midnight, Omega at noon, and then the reverse as there is the divine interchange. As I will be speaking to you tomorrow, you will understand that the planets in Capricorn signify the beginning of cycles, cycles of light and darkness on our planet. Before we conclude this evening, I would like to remind you that an eight-week summer course is beginning at Summit University at the Royal Teton Ranch between July 5th and August 30th. Levels 1 and 2 of Summit University and the Montessori Preschool Parent and Teacher Education course under the Pan American Society. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon. And I understand Anthony Beauvais would like to speak to us now. Thank you, Mother. We're so grateful for the release of light this evening. And in order to defray the cost of this room and that of our and that of the entire team coming here for this weekend, and and, and in order to further publish the word, we would like to have a love offering this evening.
would you give the blessing of the love offering at the altar? Mm -hmm. In the name of the Christ and of the mighty I am presence and holy Christ self of each one gathered here. We call to the heart of the great divine director, beloved Saint Germain, beloved Lord Jesus, beloved Lanello, beloved El Moria, for the multiplication of this love offering which you have given from our hearts this night. Let it expand and multiply tenfold for the expansion of the light on this planetary body. We are so grateful in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Mother, in gratitude for your presence here in this city. The Keepers of the Flame would like to give this gift to you. And as I give it, I'd like to also <coughs> say that it, I know I speak for everyone here, here by saying that I'd like to make it a gift from all Keepers of the Flame who are so gathered here mm. and every flaming light bearer here also. It's a picture of a golden Buddha. <laughs> Anthony, it is supremely beautiful, and I'm so grateful for this beautiful likeness. Is it a photograph? Yes, it is, Mother. Where is the Buddha? Oh, Mother, I, I really don't know where it uh, where the Buddha is, but uh, it was on it was on a, a Chile's decree book at the teaching center, and I said, "Gee, that's such a beautiful picture," and she was so kind; she gave it to me. And uh, and I said, she said to myself, "Wouldn't be, wouldn't this be nice if we could have this blown up?" And, and uh, it's amazing how beautiful it is, so blown up. Give it to Mother. It's just absolutely beautiful. We're really grateful for your presence here in the city, Mother, and for the timely message of, of Thank your brother. Thank you very, very much. It's been a great joy and a continuing joy to be here. As you all know, I love New York. I would spend much more time here if I were allowed by the Darjeeling Council. So as I'm not allowed to be here physically, I can assure you I'm here in my finer bodies a great deal. I pray for the victory of the light bearers of this city. And if the light bearers have their victory, then New York will have a victory. If they do not, then New York cannot have a victory either. That's the equation all over the world. And the message we hear from the Great Divine Director is, bring in the age of Aquarius where you are and see what happens. God bless you, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Beloved mighty I am presence, seal these hearts of light, seal their chakras, let all the light released and drawn forth here be sealed in their causal bodies and in the temple of the sun over the Isle of Manhattan, that it may never be requalified by the human consciousness. Angels of light, take up this flame that we have called forth upon this altar, that the flame of the Ark of the Covenant 
We turn then to the octaves of light and let each soul now walk forth clothed in the garment of Archangel Michael, the armor and scepter and shield of the Lord. Go forth in his tube of light at peace beneath his own vine and fig tree. May enlightenment follow you, beloved, all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, the Compassionate Buddha, the Living Christ. Amen. We return these flames to the heart of Helios and Vesta, Alpha and Omega, with all of the love of our twin flames. Amen.